don't remember having a crisis of confidence. Of course, if you buy and then the price goes down and you buy more and the price goes down further, if you're not questioning and a little scared, then you're a moron. Uh, but, you know, I, I think that one of the important things that I have realized and incorporated into my thinking is that you're never going to get it exactly right. Sometimes, if we're lucky, we know what's going to happen. We never know when. So if you accept that, then it kind of gets you off the hook. That means you buy today at nine, it goes to eight. You buy more. You buy at eight, it goes to seven. You buy more. You don't say, oh my God, I bought at nine and went to eight. I must be a moron and, and I must be wrong. You understand the nature of this. And, you know, Warren Buffett says, I like hamburgers. Uh, and when hamburgers go on sale, I eat more hamburgers. So, you know, if you did an analysis at nine, and if the analysis was sound, and it goes to eight, you should buy more. Uh, now, of course, in our business, there's always the question of when does resolve uh, turn into hubris, and there's no easy answer. Uh, but it always goes back to rechecking your analysis, and ultimately, to your analysis being correct. Which, of course, you I mean it's your analysis. You always think it's correct, uh, but you have to have be very vigilant, and you have to believe that it's correct for good reason. Uh, but you know, I wrote a memo. You probably, since you know them all, you know, I wrote one in I think it was February of '16 called "What Does the Market Know?" And what happened is in '16 the market got off to its worst start in history, and it was really collapsing all markets. <clears throat> And uh, so I wrote a memo called On the Couch, because I said that every once in a while the market needs a trip to the train, and uh, that it was really the victim of uh, irrational fear. So I went on Bloomberg the next day. Usually when I put out a memo, I go on Bloomberg the next morning. And uh, the hosts kept peppering me and saying, well, if, if stocks are collapsing, isn't that a sell thing? Isn't that a sell thing? So... Went back to my office and I wrote a memo that day called, What Does the Market Know? And this is really a very important concept. The market is supposed to be efficient, know everything. We know it doesn't know everything. And that I believe there are times when it doesn't know anything. And, and uh, you know, I said, you can't let falling prices be a sell set because falling prices are the equivalent of investments being put on sale. How can they be a sell signal? If anything, they're a buy signal, uh, et cetera. Uh, so I went through this whole business on that subject. And then uh, I said, and you know what? However, when we you know, uh, bought high yield bonds in 1990 when they were collapsing, and when we uh, sold into the tech bubble in 99, and when we bought uh, in the period you're describing, etc. Uh, I never want to give anybody the impression that we don't do it with trepidation. You know, you can have, if you're, if you have great advantages, you can have a strong intellect and you can act on the basis of your uh, intellectual analysis and you can control your emotion. Uh, but that doesn't make you right. And there's always the possibility that you're wrong. And we must bear that in mind. Before we continue, help us clicking that YouTube like button and subscribe now to our channel. This shows the algorithm that you valued this information. And it helps us spread that message. Sharing is caring. And now, let's continue. And, uh, and uh, so, you know, and since we're only human, when we do these things, what we buy in October 08, it terrifies us. <laughs> but it, if you think about it, buying at the low point has to terrify you. I guess there's a sense of, and I think you've said this, that having raised the money, seeing the valuations yeah. that you saw, it was a case of if not now, then when. Yeah. And yeah. That, that, that well, uh, well, look, uh, a couple of days, at, Lima went bankrupt on the 15th. And as I recall, I put out a memo on something like the 18th or 19th entitled what now or maybe it was now what but 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 uh you know what i said in there by the way believe me if you weren't there it was impossible 
to figure out what was going to happen. It was impossible to prove that the financial system of the world either would or would not collapse. You, in general, we can't prove anything about the system uh, in the future. And that's particularly true when we're going through an event that's never occurred before. So there was nothing intelligent to say about the future <clears throat> of the financial system at that time. So what made us buy? Well, number one, objectively speaking, the things we were buying were extremely low prices. We were buying the senior debt of companies that had been the subject of LBOs one or two years earlier. And we were buying the senior most debt at prices where if the companies turned out to be worth a third or a quarter or a fifth of what these great buyout firms had paid a year earlier, we would have broken even. And we figured out, well, you know who I'm talking about, but we said, well, sometimes, like when you go to buy a car and you negotiate with the car salesman, you know, you say, well, you know, I, I probably could have gotten another 5% off, right? I don't, do you negotiate car prices in this country? Okay, good. So, so, so you, sometimes you come away and you say, I, I probably could have gotten another 5% off. But did you ever say, well, I probably paid too high by a factor of four. You know, I bought that car for 60000 If I'd only negotiated a little, I probably could have paid fifteen. You know, So, similarly, we concluded that the great private equity firms who had done all that due diligence probably did not overpay by a factor of three, four, or five. Uh, but then the other thing is, we reached the conclusion that what I said, what I wrote is, if we buy today and the financial system falls apart. It doesn't matter what we did. But if we don't buy and the financial system doesn't fall apart, then we didn't do our job. So we should buy. And that was, it, it's, that's about as profound as it got. Do you want to know one thing about crypto? I made over 3000% in profit in a few weeks. Fact is, the traditional financial system, the traditional money system makes you poor, not rich. If you want to earn $500,000, million, you have to wait until you're 50, 60, 70 in the traditional financial system and you probably will still be broke and you will be old. This is not a sexy combination as you can imagine. But the question is, how can you start in crypto and make these profits? Where to invest? Where to start? My name is Gunnar and I'm from Germany as you can hear and things are a little bit different in Germany. More about that later on. The fact is, there are lots of different cryptocurrencies. It's a gigantic universe where beginners and professionals get easily lost. But there is light at the end of the tunnel. There are seven key steps you need to follow to become successful in this market. You have to know them and if you fail one of them, it's literally impossible to succeed in this market. Just an example, one of the key points is your exchange and one of the biggest are for example Binance and Coinbase. These are trusted and well established exchanges but, and this is a big but, you won't find the super profitable coins on those exchanges. The unknown super profitable coins that get gigantic profits are not traded on those kind of exchanges. They are traded on much smaller insider platforms that are barely known. And I can tell you what those super secret exchanges are and why they are so profitable. And another super important thing are the right information sources. The point is, the internet is gigantic. There are hundreds and hundreds of YouTube channels, blogs, pages and much, much more. And there are also market makers and influencers. For example, Elon Musk, he is not a crypto guy. But the moment he recommended Dogecoin, it went through the roof, to the moon so to say. But why did he recommend it? Where did he hear it from? He didn't hear it from newspapers. And believe me, he is listening to someone. But you have to know who and you have to react before he is reacting. This is really, really important. And these are only two of the seven steps you have to follow in order to be successful in crypto. And if you want to know all of these steps in much more detail, and if you want to have a comprehensive checklist, Here's what you should do. There is a link below this video. Click on this link and you will get the opportunity to subscribe to my channel. Click on the link and you will see a video where I explain the next steps. So see you soon. Click on the link now. I'll see you there.